Non-Monogamy Help is a podcast where your questions about open, non-monogamous or polyamorous relationships are answered. Our host, Lola Phoenix, will consult a licensed therapist with over a decade of experience to address your problems. Names and locations have been changed or censored to keep your questions anonymous. You're listening to Non-Monogamy Help, the podcast. and welcome to episode 82 of the Non-Monogamy Help podcast. I'm Lola Phoenix. Please send your questions to nonmonogamyhelp at gmail.com and they'll either be read on the podcast or the column anonymously. If you want to read the columns and listen to the podcast, you can go to nonmonogamyhelp.com. Subscribe to the newsletter if you go to the website. A little thing will pop up. You can subscribe there or you can go to go.nonmonogamyhelp.com forward slash email. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at nonmonogamyhelp. If you want to support the columns of the podcast, please consider becoming a patron. Even $1 a month supports the daily running of the columns of the podcast. And it shows me a general vote of support. And you can do that by going to patreon.com forward slash Lola Phoenix. If you donate $5 or more a month, your name with your permission will be read at the end of the podcast. Let's get to this week's discussion question. If this is the first time you're hearing this, every week before I read the letter, I put forth a discussion question that you can use with your friends, partners, or anyone else you want to get to know a little bit more. I also answer it myself briefly to give you a little bit of context. This week's discussion question is, have you ever had your partner date another partner that you've had? For me, this is quite simple. No, (laughs) I haven't had a partner date another partner that I have had. And I, but I have... I haven't really been interested in someone else that my partner is dating. I have been interested in the same person as my partner before in the past in different relationships. And it it is awkward, but I have, I don't know, I don't get interested in people very often. So when I was uh, with my ex, he was like, well, if you're interested in this person, you know, I will kind of step back a little and let you, you know, shoot your shot more or less. And... Because I'm not interested in that many people, so I just, it it isn't something that happens so often, whereas, like, my ex was interested in a lot of different people, so, yeah, that was kind of the situation that we were in. So, yeah, that's, that's my answer. It's very short and sweet, but I think that might make for an interesting discussion question. Have you had your partner date another partner you've had? And I feel like I've worded that in a really mouthy way, but whatever. Let's get to this week's question. I found myself in a situation where my primary partner, Al, is seeing another person, Ash, and they have been dating for nearly nine months. They are very much in love, and I'm very happy for them and supporting of their relationship. Recently, over the course of the last three months, Ash and I have also started to see each other casually, which has then developed into our own semi-serious relationship. This has created a lot of emotional turmoil for Al, and she has recently spoken up about her uncomfortable feelings about Ash and I seeing each other. Her feelings range from feeling like she has to always act as the glue to the three of us, which creates a strain on each of her relationships with us separately and all of us together when we hang out too. She has also told Ash and I that she feels as though her needs aren't getting met. We are still in the process of talking things through to come up with a solution to make everyone happy and comfortable. Al says she's never wanted or agreed to a triad relationship and she feels like she is sometimes made to feel like we are forcing her to be in one by Ash and I being together. We all enjoy each other's company and will hang out, the three of us. Sometimes this is Al wanting to do so and sometimes it is either of us. None of us have talked about being in a triad relationship and it isn't necessarily something I want either. I'm happy with where things are now and I don't want them to change. Al has thrown around the idea of Ash and I simply just being platonic friends, effectively vetoing our relationship so that she feels more comfortable comfortable, even though none of us have a veto agreement in place. This is creating a lot of heartbreak for Ash and I if this comes to fruition. We are also lost with coming up with an amicable solution that suits everyone. It seems to us that no matter the outcome, either Al will have to deal with her negative feelings of us being together or Ash and I will have to go through a breakup of sorts, which seems to be as equally painful and uncomfortable. Ash and I both love Al and would do anything to make her happy, but it feels as if we would be sacrificing our happiness and love to make Al happy. And that seems very unfair in our minds. Before we get to this week's answer, I'm going to quickly plug this episode's sponsor, BetterHelp. Quite often in a lot of my columns and podcasts, I encourage people to seek a polyamory-friendly therapist. And for a lot of people, looking locally for a therapist who is supportive or knowledgeable about polyamory can be impossible or out of their budget. BetterHelp allows you to find therapists online that you can send messages to at any time of day, and they do offer some financial aid. You can get 10% off your first month by using the promo code Help at checkout. 
or going to betterhelp.com forward slash non-monogamy help. Let's get to this week's answer. This is really bizarre. It feels like the only one who's forcing you all to be in a triad is Al. And you haven't said you are in a triad, so you effectively aren't. Even if you all three hang out together, it just seems like Al is is super uncomfortable and is like making this a big deal when nobody else is. And it, I don't really understand why it is that Al's uncomfortable. And I don't know if she's if she's come to you both and it says and says that her needs aren't being met by you both. This is really bizarre. She is, if she's come to you both to say that you both are not meeting my needs, she is kind of creating a triad where you're not asking for one. What makes her uncomfortable about the situation? Is she afraid that it's going to be awkward if you two break up? Yeah, you might not all hang out together right away because there might be some pause in that. But friendship circles break up all the time. It, it is what it is. Is she afraid that you're going to be upset with her for still dating Ash if you break up? What is it about the situation that makes her so upset? She needs to be able to, like, actually say that. And it's okay for her to be a little bit uncomfortable. It, it, it might be awkward. It might be weird. And it might, you know, it might take some getting used to. And, and she kind of may have to sit in that discomfort for a little bit because she doesn't have a right <laughs> to tell you. Al has thrown around the idea of Ash and I simply being, just being platonic friends. Like, what? What? Are you, are you having sex in front of her? Like, what do you, the, you know, no, you don't get to tell your partner, oh, you just be platonic friends. No, no, that's, that's not the case. You did not agree to a triad relationship. Why does she feel like she has to be the glue? Is that something that she's doing to herself? Is there something that you both are doing that's making her feel like that? She seems to be the one who's having the problem. It doesn't sound like Ash is having any problems. Or you're having any problems. It's, it's her that's kind of having the freak out about this. And it's okay for her to feel anxious about this. But she doesn't have to be the glue. She's not in the middle. That's not the situation here. And if she feels like that, then maybe she needs to talk that through with someone because what about the situation makes her feel like the glue? And it also seems like you're saying, I could have read your email wrong, but it seems like you're saying that you all three of you hang out because Al is wanting all three of you to hang out? Th that doesn't make any sense. If she feels really weird about hanging out all three of you together, I can totally understand that. That probably would feel a little weird. You do feel a little bit awkward sometimes when, and I felt awkward too, like when I've been out with a partner and they've seen another partner and they're like trying to kiss and like talk to each other, like, oh, hi, I'm the, you know, greet them as you would a partner. It's a little awkward. <laughs> it does feel a little bit like, okay, we'll just sit here. Sometimes even just the expectation that you should feel jealous kind of makes you uncomfortable. At least that's my experience. So it is super awkward. And if you have to like hang out a little bit separately, sometimes that's fine. And give each other a little bit of privacy. That's fine. You can do that. But she has to ask for that. It just seems like she she is decided that you're all in a platonic relationship and it's her job to keep that or sorry she's decided that you're all in a triad relationship and it's and it's your her job to keep all of three of you together which is not not what either one of you asking for so first of all no no uh, she needs to stop suggesting what whether what your status of relationship is with other people she's allowed to feel uncomfortable about the fact that you're dating her partner and which is now effectively your partner too but it, it, it is awkward and that's fine but no thrown around the idea of you being platonic with somebody that you're now in a relationship with no that's a veto and and you are right to say no you don't get to decide what I am, what I am with somebody else, especially when this is not a triad. You all three need to sit down and have a conversation about this and ask Al what it is that is making her uncomfortable. Is she afraid of you and Ash breaking up and that like making her feel awkward? I mean, you can't, if, if you and Ash break up, you might need some time apart and that's fine, but that doesn't have to be the end of the world and it isn't the end of the world. So figure out what it is that is making her awkward. Explain to her that she does not have to be the glue. 
that neither one of you are asking for that. You have a relationship with Ash. She has a relationship with Ash. You have a relationship with her. And Ash has a relationship with her. That is a separate thing. Explain to her that you are not a triad. And don't allow her to bring grievances about your individual relationships to you together as if as if you are one address with her whatever she feels is lacking like what needs you are not meeting in your relationship with her and let ash address that with her but don't don't address things as a group because you're not a group if you haven't agreed to being in a triad relationship you're not in a triad so don't act as if you are and 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 just figure out what it is that makes her feel so uncomfortable because it doesn't seem like you or Ash have a problem with anything that's happening. And it's okay if she's uncomfortable. She may have to sit in that awkwardness and that discomfort for a little bit. You know, she might just have to deal with it for a little bit. That is what it is. Sometimes transitions and phases of our life are a little bit uncomfortable. You know, but just like, and I'm, I hate to compare it to this because it seems like infantilizing and I'm not trying to do that. But... Plenty of times whenever there's, you know, a, par a group of parents has a baby and then, then they have another kid. Sometimes the first kid feels unhappy with the fact that the other kids showed up. Or if, or if you adopt a kid that maybe the other kids you have might feel uncomfortable. Sometimes shit happens like that. Like, okay, you're going to be uncomfortable about this. It's going to be a little bit awkward. You can make agreements with her. Like, don't hang out all three of you together anymore. Don't do that anymore. Fine. But... You gotta ask. I can't read Al's mind and tell you what her problem is, but, you know, you, you gotta ask. All three of you sit down and ask. And then that can be the last meeting that you all three have on the topic of the relationship because there is no triad. And then talk with her separately about whatever she feels needs are not being met in your relationship and why. And then let Ash deal with that in their relationship, if that makes sense. So yeah, to sum up, I, I feel like the only one forcing you to be in a triad is Al. None of you have said that you are. You need to ask her what makes her uncomfortable about it. Find it out. See if you can compromise about hanging out together or not hanging out together. And do not accept any kind of veto. Like, as much as that may be shitty for your relationship with Al, she doesn't get to decide that. Unless you've agreed to that kind of power being bestowed on her, she doesn't get to decide that. It's awkward, and she may have to sit in the awkwardness, but that doesn't mean she gets to decide that you end a relationship with somebody. And I would put my foot and my boundaries down a little bit on that and say, don't, don't do this. Don't suggest this anymore, because that is a veto, and I do not agree with that. So yeah, I hope that helps, and good luck. Thank you for listening to episode 82 of Non-Monogamy Help. If you want to be awesome, you can donate to our Patreon. Donating $5 or more a month means your name with your permission. We'll be right at the end of the podcast. This week's current patrons are Laura Boylan, Chris Albury jones Juke Ellen Robertson, Nikki Jones, James Wartell, and Leo Yaki. If for whatever reason you can't become a patron because life happens and I get it, if you take five minutes, go to iTunes, find the podcast, rate and review it. That would be super helpful. It helps me get the podcast out there to new people. If you don't want to write a review and you just want to do a rating, that's also appreciated. So that's all for this week. You'll get a new column next Friday and another podcast episode in a fortnight. Thank you again for listening. been listening to non-monogamy help our podcast music has been provided by chris albury jones at albury jones.com and the art was made by dom Yung at d-o-m-d-u-o-n-g.com thank you for listening <laughs>